Hey there and welcome in. Uh, Linux Renaissance, right? This is my channel, of course, uh, but this channel is not necessarily about Linux per se. This is my channel and uh, it's about stuff that I care about, right? So uh, one of the major things I do care about is Linux, also free software, as in Libre software. Uh, and I would argue that this uh, topic, see, topic is even more important to me than just the uh, Linux kernel, right? The kernel is, you know, it, it's just an enablement for all things free software, uh, in a way, right? And so I have been testing FreeBSD and a lot of other stuff that all is about free software, right? Uh, there are some privacy topics, this is also some of my interest. Uh, but also something that we might be able to call digital minimalism. If you have seen, there, there is one video like a couple of months ago that, that I did uh, was about smartphones. I think I called it like seven things smartphone can do uh, good in our lives, right? Uh, but generally what I meant with, uh, with this topic is how smartphones are actually kind of a bad for our lives, modern lives. Uh, in many ways, uh, most of it comes from notifications, uh, overload, um, social media, uh, quick trips, uh, and by trips I mean quick gratifications, uh, dopamine rushes like uh, uh, seeing all the likes that you get on your uh, Facebooks or TikToks or you know whatever you do, like low effort stuff that you do online and coming back to see more likes coming and more likes coming and even more likes coming and then you feel uh, quick quick bursts of energy and mo mostly this concerns younger people because they grew up with this kind of life but also this concerns concerns our um, I don't know how would you frame it like a mid-aged man right uh, I'm not sure how much this goes around with older people but what I have been trying to do is minimize my smartphone usage and a lot of people have been telling me like why why are you searching for a different kind of phone why not just delete applications that are hurting your uh, quality of right, life right and I did try I, I really tried. I deleted a lot of stuff on my phone, but somehow these applications find their way back to my phone. It's kind of a FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. And just because I can install applications that I think are not that healthy for me, um, they, they keep coming back. They, they just do. And this is not something that is easy to be controlled. I have made a parallel uh, between drug addicts and smartphone addicts. The, the center in your brain uh, that deals with this addiction is not that different be between drugs and smartphones. Drugs are bad, we all know that, right? Uh, but smartphones, eh, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, really a problematic topic that can't be really uh, summarized in, um, in in one video. Let me show you one page that I have stumbled upon today. I, I really didn't know about this today. I was just I was just browsing some dumb phones on the internet and I uh, stumbled upon HMD web page, right? This is a Finland um, company that deals with... Uh, they, they are making phones, right? They're making, making some um, smartphones that are not that good, to be honest, and they're making uh, Nokia branded uh, dump phones. So one of the things that they are doing, let me let me read something here. It's time to talk about phones, mental health and what can be done. And let me read some of this. Um, I'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background, I can't do nothing about that. We are having a, a child birthday party and my house is pretty full. So uh, it is what it is. Our global research has consistently found cause for concern regarding the impact of social media on our lives. And it's something that can be often leaked with smartphones. We know that younger people themselves are concerned about the effects of their screen time and so social media usage, with 38% saying they spend too much time on social media. At the same time, two-thirds of parents globally are concerned about the impact of smartphones on the mental health of their children. 
while almost half feel that mobile phone use has changed their child's personality. And while 11 years old is the average age as parents gives a smartphone to their child for the first time, a majority of parents confessed that they wished they had waited for longer. With too many parents and younger people are feeling the strain of their screens, more needs to be done to address uh, these concerns. Action is needed today. Okay, back to the talking head, right? So I have done an experiment of um, being really, really disconnected from everything social media and instant messenger, all of them, uh, for almost a month. And I, I'm going to share some of the results with you. So disconnecting myself from social media, it, it's not that hard. And by disconnecting from social media, I meant uh, disconnecting both from the phone and from the uh, my computer, right? Uh, also the instant messengers, uh, I have deleted WhatsApp completely. I have uh, uh, deleted just the application uh, of Telegram. Telegram is my main uh, instant messenger. So I, I, I'm planning to keep using it, right? But I have been uh, deleted the application for, for this month. And what I have learned is, is that the environment around me is designed at the moment, at, at this present, uh, as um, you're not supposed to do that, right? Uh, because the, the people around you expect you to have instant messenger. Um, with my company uh, that, that I work with, uh, we have had, um, what do you call it? The, the, the relaxing day um, team building. We have had team building somewhere and um, someone caught me singing, right? And they recorded a video of me. And when all the event was uh, finished, they asked me, uh, why don't I have WhatsApp so they can send me this video, right? And I told them like, send me an email. And it was a bit of a weird moment because you realize in their eyes that it is expected of you to have WhatsApp. We are in Europe, right? So WhatsApp is default. In USA, it might be iMessage, but uh, whatever, you, whatever it is, uh, whatever continent you live on, there is something that is default, right? And people expect you to have that. This was an awkward moment, right? So also my wife, when I started this experiment, she asked me, how am I supposed to send you messages? Because, you know, you know, we are all, always sending messages to each other. Uh, we synchronize kind of our lives uh, when we are uh, up, apart during the day. And this is completely normal. And this kind of uh, life has infiltrated uh, <laughs> in our daily workflow, right? It, it's not that easy to just delete all bunch of stuff and just not have it anymore. It, it requires reprogramming, not just yourself, but a lot of people around you. And if you do that uh, abruptly, you're going to be a weird guy. You're going to be shunned from the society. And with my age, it's not that much of a problem. I have my attitude and I can just tell people, you know, if you wish to see me, call me. And people will do that for me because they want to have uh, connections with me. They want to be around me. They want to hang out with me. They will call me if I tell them that this is the only way that they can reach me. But with children, it, it, it's really not that simple. Children are slaves to their, their environment. And if all their friends have smartphones with iMessage or WhatsApp, your child needs to have WhatsApp as well. It's not that easy. So. I really don't know what uh, I can do to make my child's life better in a way that they uh, disconnect from, you know, the, the all, all of this addiction. Uh, but this is something that has been rolling in my head for a lot of months. And uh, I'm not sure if this video is even getting through you. Uh, if you are a parent, if you are a person who is thinking about being a parent, if you're a person who doesn't even care about being a parent, but just uh, cares about improving your own life and the quality of your life. Have you been to a bus station recently? People are, you know, and then you go to a coffee bar and see all kinds of couples uh, like being together and both A and B person is like, 
Do you drive a car? Have you stopped on a red traffic light and looked at the driver next to you or the other side? They are like... And then they check the traffic light and then they tap some more and then somebody honks the horn and sorry, sorry, I'm driving now. This is going on all the time. So I have been thinking, the, one of the ways that I could help myself and this is something that I really want to do for me. I want to improve myself and my life and the way I'm going to do that is by decreasing what my smartphone is even capable of doing. This is crucial. Smartphone or a phone, whichever I pick, it must not be able to do things that hurt me, that hurt my quality of life. So all the social media and all kinds of stuff that must not be supported at all. What I think that I need and the emphasis is on I think that I need is a good camera on my phone. So I have been thinking about this a lot. The, the way I live my life these days is that I take a lot of pictures because when I was younger, I have always, always having this mantra that the best camera that you have is the one that is in your pocket, right? You can have a lot better camera at home, but if the, if you don't have it with you, uh, when the moment comes, you know, um, it, it's as good as you don't have it at all, right? So having really great cameras on phones today, I, I think that's important. But when I think back, uh, when I look back on my photos, right, that I did in the past year, uh, the most important photos that I did was on organized trips. Like when I went with my family somewhere, when I went somewhere with my friends, these are all things that we have agreed upon in advance. And these are all events that I was uh, completely able to prepare my camera. And by camera, I mean the actual camera, not the phone. Uh, and I was able to bring it with me. So there isn't that much spontaneous moments as I thought that there were, right? Go, go to your phone and scroll back and see which of the um, uh, photos are really important to you. For me, it turns out these are organized events. So I, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm getting to kind of an ideal smartphone. And will it be a smartphone? That is the question. I have found this on the Edic. Uh, it's 19 years old and I have turned it on after being off for 19 years and uh, it charged, it works. Uh, right now the battery is like half, half, halfway down. Half, battery is halfway down and uh, it has been on for six days. I have been talking to on this device for six days. I have been sending a couple of messages. I have been playing Snake. Uh, and I have seen on eBay and Amazon that there are some more um, dense batteries available for this one. So this one has a 700 milliamp battery and roughly in this state, in this 19 year old state, it can do like two weeks. Uh, if I get a new one, I suppose it will be able to do a bit more than two weeks. And I have seen online I can buy a 1000 and 100 milliamp battery. So this is roughly like 50% more. And uh, if it's a new one, I suspect I might be able to do a full month on, 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 on our standby and not too much usage. But we'll see, we'll see. Some people that follow me on various social media have given me uh, links to various dumb phones that are being produced today for a similar um, goal that I am uh, chasing right now. But the problem is all these uh, dump phones are kind of um, enthusiast grade. One of them costs like 400 euros. One of them costs like 300 euros. I mean, come on, Th this is supposed to be an easy entry, no friction solution, right? So this one was of course free because also you can go to a Nokia website. It's a HMD company, but you know, Nokia branded phones. All of their phones are like 60 to 80 euros, roughly the ballpark, right? All these phones pretty much resemble what this one does, except the ones with Kai OS. I'm not sure what I think of that operating system because th this one appears to be uh, like a fork of Firefox OS, uh, but it also appears to be proprietary. Uh, so I, I did not do my research properly. 
but as soon as I saw that it can do WhatsApp, it, it was a red flag for me because I don't want a phone that can do WhatsApp. This is, this is bad. This is bad. I don't want that. Also selling a dumb phone for 400 euros, that, that's kind of a tough sell for anyone. If you're a company who wants any chance of persuading people to maybe think about their mental health and maybe do that by thinking about dumb phones, you should sell them for the amount that HMD does, like 60 to 80 euros. I think this is an easy uh, point of entry. And I don't want to advertise HMD. I, I, I only uh, mention them because Nokia is like a brand from my childhood and I'm kind of a gravitating uh, towards this brand. I know it is just a label on a phone that's being done, uh, made in China by a completely new company. Uh, and there are, of course, other phones like uh, Caterpillar is doing their own. Uh, you can get them with slightly larger batteries. O o all that is fine. Okay, this video has reached the maximum attention span of an average adult and I really need to cut it here. There is no final conclusion to this video. I will keep working on myself. I will keep using this as my primary phone for as long as I am able. Uh, unfortunately, I am dependent on some of the applications on my smartphone, like uh, two-factor authorization. I really cannot log in into anything without that. Would I be able to transfer that to my laptop? Basically, yes, but that brings up a lot of other discussion that is not part of this video. I would very much like to hear about all of you. What do you think about this? How do you see me after this video? How do you see yourself after this video? And what are we all going to do about it? I'm going to see you in the next video.